What is up you guys? Welcome to today's video. Stay tuned if you guys want to know how to get from this front end to this front end. What is up you guys? Welcome to today's video. Today we are going to be taking a little bit of a detour or a little bit of a other route in terms of the JDM car content. And we will be going to be doing today a front end conversion on our 2020 uh, Silverado work truck. So. We're not doing a full front end conversion, but we're gonna be taking all the steps required for a front end conversion. If you're watching this at home and you wanna do the whole thing, then pretty much the same thing. The difference is that we're gonna take this just the less crazy expensive route, and we're just going to be doing a mild upgrade. But as you guys can see, random South Carolina weather. It's barely starting to like try and get wet. Like there's still some dry spots and some are obviously a little bit more, but you can tell it literally just started now that I pulled out the camera and I wanted to start recording. Look at that grass, oh my goodness. It's a lot bigger than our typical car. Just pulled in the truck. So I wanted to show you guys also, before you notice from the back, um, yes, we have another car. This is not ours. It's a 350Z manual transmission. It is super, super mint in terms of the motor the inside, like everything, obviously the top here. The top is fading a touch, but overall the car is in really good shape. I believe it's two owner or three owner. It, it's, it's like the perfect car to have if you want a 350Z. And apparently these haven't been too abused or molested because uh, they're not as popular in the car world. But I might think about getting something like this. On camera, this paint comes by so, so nice. And over here on the welding table, actually, we have our new front grille for the truck. We're not doing the whole package. We're gonna be leaving the headlights and the bumper. The bumper is gonna get color matched to the truck and then we'll just have the chrome front end, which is this one. We took off this trim. Uh, where is it? This was on here. Okay, so at first I was going to color match the grille to the truck and have it look really, really nice in terms of I like just have everything flow together. I saw a truck online that had it this way and it looked really, really good. But after realizing how much these grills cost, um, they're $1,500 new. So if you have that kind of money and you don't mind messing it up, then go ahead. I found this on a, at, at a real good deal. I couldn't pass up and uh, got it for a fraction of the price. I took these off because I wanted to color match everything that is chrome here. I wanted the color of the truck, but then I started asking and then I realized, you know, it's it's really, really close. Either it's chrome or white and the chrome doesn't look bad either. Uh, I figured first I'm going to put the chrome and if I don't love it, then I'll take it back off and then color match the chrome to the truck. Let me show you guys if you're doing this front end conversion at home. On the back end, it sucks. All these little clips you see, uh, you just have to be very patient because they're pretty, pretty fragile. So from what I know, you have four clips across the front and one, two, three, four clips across the back of this plastic trim. Apparently this plastic trim is one of the first pieces that can go, that nothing else is in the way. So let's go ahead and do that. I've been itching to do this front end conversion so, so much. I've been doing these, uh, the 86s and the BRZs for so long that working on a truck is kind of, kind of exciting. So just these regular trim pieces. There's two on the far side. You could try and wiggle it out, but I'm not gonna risk it. I'm just gonna remove these two little bolts that are back here, and that will allow this latch to come off, which will allow this to lift. Oh my God, working on a new car is so easy. Nothing is rusted, it's awesome. I'm not sure how I feel about that plastic latch. I guess as long as it doesn't get too hot in there. Okay, we got a couple 10 mils, a couple 10 millimeter bolts up top. Next step should be removing these little, apparently we have to remove these sides in order to get into here. And I'm actually seeing an issue with this. You'll see in a second, but for now, we're gonna have to remove this liner on the inside and then 
pull back this little plastic piece and then pull this off in order to get to the back of the grill which is in here. No power tools required today I see. Um, I believe you, yeah, about three of them hold this plastic or this liner. So once you remove these little star bits look like this you will be able to pull this back when and then after that it'll allow you to pull these plastic pieces off from what i saw i hope i don't break this oh yeah okay so from what i see these just come out Oof, it's kind of scary Oof. Uh oh i think these just these like hook back in and now we have to take off this little 10 mil bolt or no, that's like an eight mil bolt. All right. From what I know, this should pop out as well, which is kind of scary. I don't like yanking on new stuff. Oh, oof, a little heart attack there. <laughs> that sucks. That's very scary. Oh, and it just falls off. And all it's got is two clips up front that they come, they come out straight. So if you try to pry this way, it probably won't work well. Uh, so yeah, definitely recommend taking it off the side first. And then, yep, a couple 10 mils right here. Two 10 mils on each side of the grill. Can't help it, I'm just addicted to tools. And, oh no, just one. Seems like, that's a little, just one 10, okay, never mind. Yeah, that's it, all right, so. Rinse and repeat on the other side. So full disclaimer, we got the other side done and I actually went ahead a little bit because camera, of course, died. Quickly recharged it. I still haven't gone to buy another battery pack. I'm gonna go do that today if I can finish this early. We got a little ahead and now we went to the future, came back and check this out. So the grill comes off, you have to lift up on these little corner tabs because these tabs have like a little hook even after you get the screws out you have to lift it up and pull back the touch and on this side same and then it kind of just pulls back and you have to pop it into out of place uh, it doesn't have many if you guys can tell it's got one here it's got one here and then two here and another one on the other side and it literally just clips in and out and of course the other one is just going to clip in so if you were to be done with your conversion this is where you would get the other front end or the other grill just clip it back into place and then reverse the side process pretty easy but because we're going to continue this one step further we're not going to color match the grill but we are going to color match the bumper so now we're going to remove the bumper i actually already took the bumper off I'm going to show you exactly where the bolts are. Careful with your hands. Uh, you can squeeze through there pretty tight. So up on the front side of the grill, right here, you're going to have four. Two that are really easy to access, and then two that you're going to have to get an extension into the bottom here. The first bolt is essentially right under this corner, and it's right here off to the side. That one is pretty easy. You just stick your uh, drill in there if you have one. Hopefully you do. And then you just unbolt it there. And then beside it on the inside, and I'm gonna pull this back so you guys can tell. Right there. So there's the other one way down there and you have to obviously line the two up and unbolt it or you know what I mean. On each side of the truck, you have these little arms hopefully you guys can catch that off the camera you can either unbolt these two or just the one that hooks the bumper if you're going to be replacing the bumper alone then just unhook this one bolt off to the side but if you need to remove the whole bumper or if you'll be replacing your bumper with some aftermarket one you may need to take this whole arm off so once you remove those six bolts then just nice and easy pull it off for a 2500 2020 this was way too easy i mean i i appreciate the serviceability i love it i'm not complaining 
just kind of scary how much some companies over engineer their stuff and this truck is the best truck or the best car I've had in in a long time there's a wasp up here now that the bumpers off we're gonna start to prep the bumper for paint you guys can see we already uh, took care of all the sanding so a lot of this is already primered like this is already primer and uh, I don't think it's smart to knock it down to the bare metal so I think we're gonna just keep this primer so that I don't have to reprimer it and uh, so I, yeah I knocked it down sanded it with uh, so that's 120 I knocked it down to that much I had it thicker and I had it a little bit finer but this is the this is my middle comfort zone I guess the plastic I didn't sand just because it's already kind of rough I'm just gonna really clean all this up with some degreaser and uh, make sure all of this is spotless before we continue to paint. Before you guys start spraying, you want to double check, make sure double, triple, like wipe it down, make sure there's no oils. If there is any oil, you'll have orange peel, it won't stick and it won't be pretty. And on a truck like this, you kind of want that finish outdoor paint job isn't exactly as good as a professional paint job with a booth and all this extra stuff but if it doesn't turn out good then we'll take it to a professional shop but i have pretty high hopes i've done this a few times to where i can expect pretty good results especially with a day like today it's not super hot it's not super cold it's about right the rain stopped about two hours ago so we are pretty much good to go on that so the type of paint i'm using is uh, oem uh, finish it is exactly like color match to the truck the brand I like not like not sponsored at all obviously a uh, brand I like to use is paint scratch a uh, buddy of mine told me a while back and ever since I haven't stopped buying from them just because they nail it every time and if it's not perfect most likely your car is too old and uh, it's probably sunburnt but yeah so I use their paint they also have clear that I've used before it works good but I personally like to have a two-part clear because the clear is kind of what gives it that really, really glossy finish. And for that, I use this 2K uh, Spray Max, or I'm not sure exactly what brand, but this one. The one that has this little knob on the top that you take this out, put it in the bottom, and essentially what it does is it cracks the inside to where the actual clear coat, like, it'll mix, and uh, you'll have an actual two-part clear coat. So it'll harden a lot better and be more resistant in the long run. I know you guys are so tempted to lay that first coat on real, real thick. Don't do it. You'll regret it once it starts peeling. That first coat needs to be real light. It needs to look spotty. And this may be a thick first coat if you ask me. You guys can tell once you get up close, it's a little spotty and not not the best, which is good. You don't want it to be that well. If we're being honest, you kind of want it to look something like this, more of a darker, more of a darker color instead of a lighter. I wanted to have this bottom part white, but then I thought it looked tacky if it was white all the way out here. So I taped up this corner and then left this white, then the middle black still, this black and then white on the bottom. I think it'll look good. Let this thing sit and then we'll go over this a bunch more times, maybe like a solid three to four more times of clear uh, of paint and then we'll go for the clear coat. Okay, so we just got done with the last coat of paint. The bumper looks amazing. The color looks spot on. I'm not going to show you the exact color yet, obviously, because we're going to wait for the reveal. This is the satisfying part of the spraying. So I, to be honest, like spraying in a, in a can. It just feels comfortable. I've done it so many times that I can lay a pretty, pretty good coat. Probably even better than a cheap Harbor Freight gun with this uh, can here. I grab the cap, put it in the bottom, slightly put it in there, and you're kind of going to jam it in there, and you're going to hear a crack on the inside if you can do it yep once once it's able to go in there like that 
that means you cracked it. After you do that, you've got like 48 hours, probably, or a day to use it before it's not good. Shake this thing, lay a clear coat on, and hurry up and throw this thing on the truck. By the way, give every coat the required time to dry. I did a total of four coats, four cans of paint. Don't be stingy with the paint, buy enough. And that's just like a bumper. So you can imagine if we were to like paint a whole panel, it'd take forever. We got the uh, old uh, South Carolina treatment. And uh, unfortunately, we had a couple spots of water come on top of it. We rushed it inside, but even then, it got a couple dots. You guys see, it's dirty of course, but yeah, there's some water on it. I mean, it's still not bad, but if you look closely, really closely, there's like these little like bubbles. You can see it right there. Little dots from that water. These trucks have these uh, bumper covers, I believe is what they call them. Bumper fillers? Something like that. I don't know. Some weird name for something else that they made to cover up the front end. It's not the bumper. It's not the fender. It's in between the two. Don't ask. I don't know. And I'll show you guys what I'm going to do about it. Did a little bit of measuring and it, what turns out to be the right amount is going from the outside of the headlight or the, I guess the inside of the headlight. This would be the outside. Uh, the inside of the headlight at eight inches part that's on the actual headlight taking it to about eight and a half inches measure out here eight and a half and eight here draw a line and cut across easier said than done uh, wish me luck you get that just about perfect line uh, it's not going to be perfect because obviously this is not even the best way to do it Ideally, you shouldn't tear this up because you could resell them, but uh, when you're impatient, this is what you have to do. <laughs> so you're going to use a razor blade, or at least I am, just because this is going to be creating the least amount of damage. And you're just going to score it and just keep going across that same area until you break through. So here's what she looks like with everything fit, finished, in the sun, curing. It's going to be good. I love it. Actually, the results are honestly really, really good. For what I spent on this, I actually had some Summit White paint. And if you guys know anything, I mean, that's the most basic color they have for uh, Chevy pickup trucks is the Summit White. It's the work truck. So that's a good thing because I had some spare paint. So I didn't spend anything on that. And uh, the grill was just 300 bucks on uh online some guy just had it sitting there brand new didn't need it 300 bucks check out uh the outcome the way this is supposed to be is that once you get your new piece instead of doing the cutting i did it essentially it's this piece and it comes and it, it turns into this little bottom panel that I'm missing actually. And it goes straight across, fits into this one, and it's one big piece the whole front end. Um, I don't hate it. I don't love it. Once you get up close, these cuts are really ugly. So, yeah. Uh, it is what it is. For a $300 front end conversion, it can't get much better than that. Um, so, yeah. If you guys want to spend the money, do it right you know, it's going to be that 10% better. But if you want to get a good fit, a good finish for something like 300 and some change, then you can do it this way. I'm loving it. Thank you guys for watching the video. See you guys in the next one. Stay tuned. And uh, you guys can now call me a front end conversion king. <laughs>